Most definitions of Lent that have any remote relationship to Catholic orthodoxy are filled with references to penance, sacrifice, and the need to pursue sanctity. It is a time of detachment from the world and our sinful natures. I'm going to give you a classic example of what I mean here by telling you about how the Vatican has issued a different sort of Lenten statement that shows just how badly we need to do acts of penance for the conversion of many of the prelates in Rome. But first we have this. It is a definition of Lent from a rather infamous encyclical from Pius XI on the state of the church in Germany, written in the 1930s. Now, I'm not going to go into details here, but that encyclical was groundbreaking because the church put certain leaders on notice for their wicked ways, in ways we wouldn't see done today, sadly. But here's what the Pope said in that encyclical about Lent, and I want you to remember this as we go over this. Quote, like other periods of the history of the church, the present has ushered in a new ascension of interior purification on the sole condition that the faithful show themselves proud enough in their confession of their faith in Christ, generous enough in their suffering to face the adversaries of the church with the strength of their faith and charity. May the holy time of Lent and Easter, which preaches interior renovation and penance, turn Christian eyes towards the cross and the risen Christ, be for all of you the joyful occasion that will fill your souls with heroism, patience, and victory. Then we are sure the adversaries of the church, who think that their time has come, will see that their joy was premature, and that they may close the grave they had dug. End quote. Lent is a time for penance and victory. It's an interesting notion in these times. And maybe whoever wrote the statement released by the Vatican that we'll go over here shortly should read that famous encyclical to German Catholics by Pius XI as a reference, because the Vatican has since released a statement about Lent that is so worldly that I thought it was something said on NPR or BBC by a secular or non-Catholic Christian figure of some kind, and not something that comes from the Vatican. In a move that will surprise no one, Francis released a statement on Lent that invokes the present situation in the world that has now persisted for the past calendar year, and on the surface it sounds Catholic. His new bulletin, released Friday and largely ignored by pretty much everyone in the Catholic world, instead focuses on Lent as a season of hope and quote-unquote sharing of our goods, framed as charity. It's an interesting statement that many will say sounds Catholic, but one of the hallmarks of modernism is that rarely does a statement mean, well, anything concrete, and it can be interpreted in any way that the purveyor of the message wants. Here's a, here's a quote from the statement to give you an idea of what I mean by ambiguity, one of the hallmarks of the Vatican, unfortunately, since the Second Vatican Council. Francis on Lent as a season of hope here, it, and it's a strange concept, quote, Hope, then, as living water, enabling us to continue our journey, live with Jesus, and thanks to Jesus, means believing that history does not end with our mistakes, our errors against others, or the sin that crucifies love. It means receiving from his open heart the Father's forgiveness. Even in the current context of concern, Lent is precisely the season of hope when we turn back to God who patiently continues to care for his creation, which we have mistrusted. See Laudato Si. St. Paul urges us to place our hope in reconciliation. Be reconciled to God. By receiving forgiveness in the sacrament that lies at the heart of our process of conversion, we turn can spread forgiveness to others. Having received forgiveness ourselves, we can offer it through our willingness to enter into attentive dialogue with others and to give comfort to those experiencing sorrow and pain. God's forgiveness, offered also through our words and actions, enables us to experience an Easter of fraternity. In Lent, may we increasingly be concerned with speaking words of comfort, strength, cons consolation, and encouragement, and not words that demean, sadden, anger, or, sh or show scorn. See Vertelli Tutti. End quote. Ah, yes, no mean words. Citations to Laudato Si and Vertelli Tutti. That actually says a lot. Here he likens pollution to sin, which is a wonderful turn of events to be sure, but... Again, he hasn't defined anything really or formally said that not caring for quote-unquote our common home is a sin, so it doesn't really all that matter all that much. The language of accompaniment fills the statement. We are to love those subjected by the affliction. 
offer aid to our neighbor, and a bunch of other similar statements that in the proper context are actually perfectly fine, but there's something missing. In this statement about Lent, a time of penance and sacrifice, the term penance or penitential does not appear a single time. Sin appears once, and it comes in the context of human fraternity. It's a weird statement, especially for Lent, a strange one that by now we should be used to, but instead, Fratelli Tutti strikes again. It's also tiresome, but the vast majority of you hearing this go to Nova Sordo parishes and will, as a consequence, have a high chance of hearing a homily on human fraternity during this Lenten season. Be ready for that, because in the end, that is not what Lent is about, at least traditionally. There is a key concept to understanding modernism that is essential for understanding why this is important. The concept is of vital imminence. Now, what you may be asking is that. What is vital imminence? It is the philosophical leg of modernism that, sta that states that all of the faith can be reduced to something relative. This principle reduces all reality to the subject, which means to you or me, which is said to be the source, the beginning and the end of all its created activity. It turns the faith into something purely relative and sentimental, he hence why we hear so little about sin, about where sin leads us, and certainly why we never hear anything about the four last things especially being cast by God into Gehenna. We hear so little about this today because, for this principle, a sentimental faith replaces the Catholic faith, thus leading to the language of accompaniment instead of spreading the gospel. Lent is the perfect time to be spreading the gospel as we head towards Easter, but instead of that, we get Fratelli Tutti and Laudato Si. Do you see how human fraternity replaces penance? Accompaniment defines fasting in this document as sharing our goods instead of self-denial to break our subjugation to the Lord of the world. It's a remarkable thing that if you don't understand modernism in the slightest, you won't see how this document or most Vatican documents of the past 60 years have been a mixed bag at best and at worst outright traps for those trying to keep the Catholic faith. So in closing, I'll say this. Tomorrow, barring some groundbreaking major news, I will have a video for you on making a good Lent in the context of the present state of the church. And in fact, even if there is groundbreaking news, you'll still get that video. I'll just make a second one. It'll be framed in what the great minds of the church have been saying on penance and fasting and the rest of what we really should be spending our Lent on. I had planned to do that before Francis released this statement. So for those of you who think I'm just trying to correct Francis here, so just tune in for that because making a good Lent is essential, especially this year. But if anything, this shows that we need now more than ever to be praying and fasting for Francis, offering our rosaries for him, not for his intentions. As I've said, many will still think I mean, not for his intentions, but for him himself. Our Lord said to pray for everyone, pray ceaselessly even for our adversaries. And since Francis falls under the category of everyone, that means we need to be praying for him, even if you don't much care for him. If you want to read the document, I'll have a link to it at my sources website at returntotradition.org in today's show notes. Our hosts dislike lots of external links placed that might compete with their ad revenue, so I post the sources there. Again, returntotradition.org, the name of this channel with a .org at the end. But let me know what you think of this, and I hope you have a blessed Lent that helps you break your attachments to the things that turn your eyes off Christ. We all have them, and Lent is a holy season for righting the wrongs in our lives and growing in holiness. So, play, so of course, pray for the Church. I'm Anthony Stein. Ave Maria. <laughs>